after Nezuko became human, Inosuke became really fond of her due to her kindness and patience, explaining a lot of things that Inosuke doesn't know to him. While never being condescending, he even thinks of her like a mother, following her around everywhere, acting as her bodyguard when she goes out. He always accompanies her on her monthly visits to Kanao and Aoi, much to Zenitsu's annoyance. Nezuko just seems to be everyone's favorite gal. After the final battle, Giyu's Haori jacket is almost destroyed to nothing, but it held precious memories to him, so Nezuko skillfully mends it for him. After this, Giyu is greatly moved and began sending her countless gifts like kimonos, western clothes, hair ornaments, and jewels, greatly enraging Zenitsu. Seems like all Zenitsu's doing after the final battle is getting ticked off. After defeating Muzan, our boy Tanjiro stepped in to give love advice to Zenitsu, asking him to change his behavior if he really liked his sister and quit expecting pampering from Nezuko, otherwise she'll start to see him as a little brother. Zenitsu finally properly confessed to Nezuko while on a walk to see a field of flowers. Tanjiro knew he was going to confess without him needing to even say anything because he could smell the nervousness on him. Best wingman Tanjiro distracted Inosuke so that he wouldn't follow Nezuko during the confession since he follows her everywhere. Zenitsu ended up shouting his confession so loud, everyone heard exactly what he said. Anyone getting Edward vibes from this? I'll give half of my life to you if you give half of yours to me. He was so loud at the confession, Nezuko couldn't hear anything for the rest of the day. After confessing, Zanitsu asked Nezuko to give him her answer in a year. Did she ever respond in time? Just take a look at this. Zenitsu promised Nezuko that he would always protect her at all costs. Looks like this promise transcended across generations, cause Nezuko and Zenitsu's descendant, Yoshitiro, once got hit by a truck protecting his two younger sisters. Zenitsu started writing an autobiographical-ish novel called The Legend of Zenitsu that was passed down all the way to their descendants in the modern day. Obviously, the events have been greatly altered. One of Tanjiro and Kanal's descendants, Kanata Kamado, is known as the first love thief, stealing hearts everywhere just like his ancestor. Tanjiro earned the nickname Mommy by his peers while training with pillars because he was so good at cooking. Mommy had several pin pals, often keeping in touch with Sakonji, Sanjiro, the courtesans from the entertainment district, Giyu, and Tengen. Giyu was the only one out of the pin pals that never wrote back to him. According to Tengen, Giyu always looked like he was at a funeral. After the battle, Giyu finally started responding to Tanjiro's letters and had a change of personality. He became a much happier guy. He even went on a hot spring outing with Tangan and his wives. Tanjiro added Sanami to his pen pals crew and started writing letters to him after everything ended, but he too never replied. Tanjiro later learned from one of the crows that Sanami can read but doesn't know how to write. He kept writing and one day found a bundle of ahagi and matcha gifts on his porch and delivered sneakily by Sanami without anyone noticing. There was no name or anything, but they all knew who it was from because Tanjiro could smell Sanami from the package. So wholesome. Sanami didn't get along with anyone except Obanai. They got a long well ever since they first met. He's his bro. Saname himself is incredibly dense and when it comes to romance, he only found out that Obanai likes Mitsuri because Gyome let it drop one time. Gyome is blind but he's ridiculously observative and intuitive. He speculated that Saname seems to like Kane. Obanai is in love with Mitsuri. Mitsuri seems to like him back and noticed Shinobu and Gyu both really enjoy talking to each other. Gyome, the shipper pillar. His blindness was not battle related it was due to a high fever he had as a child. People found it unsettling how sharp Giyome's senses were. Some mean people would throw things at him or try to trip him, but he would always be able to dodge, leading to people accusing him that he's lying about his sight. Before she was turned into a demon, Nezuko wore her hair pinned up. Afterward, she started wearing it loose. Nezuko chose this look because she was no longer able to deal with her hair and Tanjiro didn't have the skill to do it for her. But we see Tanjiro trying really hard and learning how to do her hair properly in this scene braiding her hair like Mitsuri in the swordsmith village arc. Suma, one of Tengen's three wives, is bisexual according to the fanbook. She was reportedly quite excited for Tengen to take on additional wives. Makio, one of Tengen's wives, is apparently a relative of Tengen. A distant cousin, actually. Uh, no cousin. 
on it. Tengen thought Shinobu and Mitsuri both had good childbearing hips. According to Mitsuri, Tengen may have actually had 8th grade syndrome as he speaks and behaves like a 10 year old child at times. He's the fastest running pillar out of the 9. Apparently, Obanai is ranked 7th and could have been faster if only he gave up on his serpentine running and ran straight. Mitsuri thought about confessing to Obanai, but she was under the impression that Obanai is kind to everyone, when in reality, he's only nice to her. She even consulted Shinobu for love advice, but Shinobu is also a bit clueless in this area, often going on about brain responses, heart rates, and blood pressure when discussing love. Whenever Mitsuri and Obanai have a meal together, he himself doesn't eat, but he always enjoys quietly watching Mitsuri happily chewing down her food with a smile on his face. Our snake man is also Shakespeare because he often wrote her letters and complimented her a lot. Mitsuri and Obanai reincarnated as husband and wife in modern day. They are owners of a tasty diner and have five kids. Muichiro thought Obanai has beautiful eyes and that Mitsuri has beautiful hair. I guess I just found the couple's biggest fan. Muichiro wasn't allowed pets because his crow gets jealous. Tanjiro's crow name is Denojin Matsuman. While other crows were given names, his named himself. He never holds his crow in his palm. This is because his crow thinks he's superior to Tanjiro. Muichiro's crow was in bad shape and was wasting away after the final battle. But Tanjiro's crow cared for her and now they've become a couple. Man, I didn't know I needed all this crow content in my life until after I read the fan books. Ever since the defeat of Muzan, the crows and Sparrow who aided the Demon Slayer Corp have been living free, occasionally visiting the Corp members they were close to. Muichiro and Gyome were the only two people who became Ihashira after only two months of being a Demon Slayer. Genya was Gyome Sugoku, basically his successor. Gyome was hesitant to make his Sugoku because Genya can't use breaths, but but he did so because he saw his devoted determination no matter how many times he was rejected by him. Plus, he never once ran away from his trainings, which are notoriously hard, as we see in the training arc. Gotage, Demon Slayer's author, started off as an absolute noob, having to learn a lot of mangaka techniques on the way. Her assistant taught her about art supplies and perspective for drawing backgrounds in manga. She had a special bond with the first ever editor of the series. Together, they came up with the styles of breathing and their forms. Otherwise, Otherwise, the breathing techniques were just gonna be named after the wielder, like Yuro Kodaki style breathing. Her editor tried drawing manga himself, but didn't make it because he didn't have the talent for it. But that made him empathetic towards authors and is a humble, respectful guy. Her editor, who is apparently an otaku, always wanted to know the background details of the stories and characters, often challenging her on a lot of things, asking a million whys as to why is this character like this. Because of this, she learned to flesh out details of every character even the minor ones. Okay, but did we ever find out the backstory of this Demon Slayer? No. After the first 10 chapters, they had to change editors, much to Gotake's dismay. Before the change, they decided the future events of the series together. They outlined the chapters for the remaining volumes and settled on the number of characters. Her editor even sent her a guide to stick to with pointers of things to follow and making sure everything gets covered in time. The series went on for four years. Gotake anticipated 15 volumes to complete the series. The editor forecasted at least 20. Demon Slayer ended at 23 volumes so her editor was spot on. Apparently, staring at this image for more than three seconds would make you want to subscribe to this channel. If you guys remember the ex-Thunder Hashira, the grandpa is tiny. His kimono is a token to remember his master by, for Zenitsu. So in order to enlarge it, Nezuko re-sewed it to match his other kimonos and altered it by re-dyeing the material. Yushiro made one promise with Tamayo, that if they are reincarnated in their next life, they will be man and wife. Tamayo actually smiled and nodded to this. Yushiro has a Tamayo-themed diary, a diary dedicated entirely to taking notes about her greatness. Muzan had a lot of disgust disguises, pretending to be human. Whenever Muzan wanted to go out, he would leave behind a doll-like double made of his own flesh. After Muzan was transformed into a demon during the Heian period, he married five different women. He was so cruel that all five of them took their own lives because of his mistreatment. Muzan and Kaguya are related to each other. Kaguya says that his bloodline was cursed because of a demon that came from it. This demon was the original demon, which would mean the first of its kind. Fans know that Muzan is the 
first demon ever. So it makes sense that Muzan comes from the Ubuyashiki bloodline. Girls born into the Ubuyashiki clan must be married and change their surnames by age 13. Otherwise, they would die in accidents or illness, no matter how careful they are. Kiria took the lead as the Demon Slayer corpse leader, defeating Muzan at the age of eight. What were you guys doing when you were eight? That you, um, you had, you, you, you could, you do. After the battle, he thought he would die due to the curse as he approaches his 20s, but as he passes his 30s, he realizes the family curse is finally broken. He ended up as the record holder for the longest living Japanese person in history. After the battle, Kiria sent Tanjiro and his friends a crazy amount of money so they wouldn't go without it, but they still sold charcoal and took on jobs. Mitsuri viewed Rengoku as a cool older brother. Rengoku was also her mentor. She derived her love breathing from his flame breathing. Rengoku's favorite food is sweet potatoes. Mitsuri was the one who taught Senjiro how to cook this food for his brother precisely how he likes it. Giyu rarely says yes to anything, but he did accept Tanjiro's invitation to a soba eating contest. Kokushibo had never once fallen from upper rank one and was delighted to know Akaza, whom he actually likes, was aiming to request blood combat to replace him one day. After death, Doma meets Shinobu, whose body he absorbed and experiences feelings for the first time. Blushing, he invites her to hell with him. She turns him down with an insult. As a human, Gyoko always did creepy things like gathering fish carcasses and thought his parents' dead bodies as beautiful. Even as a demon, Akaza had his own principles and never harmed or consumed women even though they are way more nutritious. Muzan allowed this because he likes Akaza so much. Sumahiko is one of Tanjiro and Kanao's descendants, whereas Alba is Inosuke and Aoi's. After Sumahiko, who failed his job and started crying in the same area as him, Aoba became friends with him. Then they engaged in a game of badminton together. Looks like they're destined to become friends no matter what generation it is. Senjiro's descendant is ridiculously optimistic and has a strong heart, even saying thank you to insults. The world would be a great place if we were all like Senjiro's descendant. After the final battle, out of our favorite trio, Inosuke is the strongest of them all, given their long-lasting injuries. The Demon Slayer Court tailors who made uniforms hated Inosuke because he's constantly tearing up his clothes. I mean, do we ever see him in his uniform? Aoi rarely smiles because she's serious and responsible, but Inosuke often made her laugh because he was always doing unexpected things. Aoi used the breath of water. She passed and took the same final selection exam as Muichiro. Muichiro views each pillar as an animal. He thinks that Shinobu looks like a swallow bird, Tengen's like a monkey, Obanai is like a wild cat, Gyomei is like a bear, Sanami is like a wolf, Mitsuri is like a pink colored baby chick that goes cheap cheap. And Goku is like an owl. Is it because of his eyes? rude. Giyu is viewed as a decorative object. He's just sort of there. Rengoku had a hard time hearing Giyu because his voice was too small, or his own voice is just too loud. Especially because we know when Rengoku first became a Hashira, he had to face the flute demon. To defend himself against the flute demon's blood demon art, he intentionally ruptured his own eardrums. Moichiro wears oversized clothes to disorient enemies, to hinder their ability to predict his movements. Tengen had to fight his remaining six siblings due to his father's command. They wore masks so that they wouldn't know they were fighting their own sibling. As a result, he killed two of his siblings unknowingly. The hardest to talk to pillar is Sanami, the wind pillar, at first place due to his violent personality. Surprisingly, the big friendly giant Gyome is ranked third because the way he looks shedding tears while reciting the Nembutsu scared people. The blue spider Lily may not even bloom once a year. In the rare occasion that it does, it only does so during daytime and never more than a few dozen minutes at a time. After closing, it no longer looks like a blue spider lily and instead will look like a horsetail, making it even more difficult to distinguish and find. Kanao would have been called Kamatsu or Barracuda if it weren't for Aoi. She was picking names written on shuffled pieces of paper on the ground. Aoi wasn't into that name, so she sneakily replaced the paper with one that said Kanao. One of the quotes that's heavily associated with Tanjiro is whenever happiness is destroyed, there is always the 
scent of blood. His trauma runs deep. The fan book shares that this isn't just about what happened to his mother and siblings. Tanjiro is also the person who found his father as he was coughing up blood and about to pass. He also found his grandmother as she was passing away. Once, when he was in the village, he smelled blood and discovered that a villager was dying. This allowed him to tell their family, which gave them the chance to say goodbye. If you made it this far and enjoyed these 108 facts series, check out this one I did on Jujutsu Kaisen. 